On this week's episode of Be More Super, I am super, super excited. Uh, this actor has been in some awesome projects like Skylines, Thor The Dark World, uh, World War uh, Z, or Z for the Americans, uh, <laughs> The Last Ship, um, and The Capture, which I absolutely love. I think I think it's an awesome movie, which I'm sure we're going to talk about. It's, of course, the wonderful Jonathan Howard. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Brian. Good to meet you. I'm glad we could do this. And and you're my first English male guest because my first English guest was Jane Seymour, the Holly, 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 Hollywood legend, as right. she is known. Um, and Ooh. it's great to have an English person on the show. It's fun, fantastic. So how is everything over there at the moment? Because it's a crazy world, and obviously I presume you, you you know you keep in touch with your family over here. Uh, but how is every, mm -hmm. every, everything over there in the States? Yeah, well, it's really nice to talk to an Englishman, honestly, Brian. So, like, it goes both ways. Good to hear an, an English accent. Um, you know, it's been, you know, it's been okay. Like, it's up and down, as, as I'm sure it's been for everyone. Um, you know, um, my wife is French. We've been living out here for five years. Um, we have a, a two-and-a-half-year-old little girl. Um you know, I'd say like the first nine months of the pandemic, it was pretty, it was, it was, it was very testing because everything had closed down here. I feel like California kind of stayed in one long lockdown, whereas in the UK mm. and France and Europe, you guys kind of like reopened during the summer and had like a, a two month respite of like normal, normal kind of normality. And um, we yeah. kind of just stayed in one long one. And, um, and during the lockdown, we were, we would discuss, let's sell this house and let's move back to London. And, um, and then it was like, well, why don't we move to the French Alps and just be in the mountains? And <laughs> now with the state of France and, and, you know, the weather right now in the UK, I know that pubs and bars have reopened in the UK, right? Is that... And it's, yeah, and, and it's been really warm today. I mean, I'm a bit pink because I've been out in the sun a bit. And uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's been a steady 14 degrees all day. And who's Brits wow, think wow. 14 degrees is hot? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I saw a friend share on Instagram of like twelve degrees. And I'm like, twelve yeah. degrees is cold here. Like, I put like a big jumper on and my jeans and a woolly hat for twelve degrees. Um, yeah. But you know, it's been it's been good. It's it's, it's been okay this lockdown. Um, you know, unfortunately, my my stepdad passed away um, like two days before Trump introduced the you know the 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 travel ban to UK. Mm. So, you know, I wasn't able to fly back and, and say goodbye to him. Uh, I we had, neither of me or my wife have been able to see any of our family. Um, and then I managed to get my mum on a plane here because uh, my wife was uh, working on it. She's an actress. Her name's Ella D. Young. Um, she was working good on it. Um, Electra. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, was yeah. I was testing you, Brian. You know your stuff. Okay. I passed. I um, passed. Yeah. <laughs> we can carry on this interview now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, managed to get my mum out for a couple of months which was nice to see my mom, but also nice mm. to say goodbye to her because no adult child should have to live with their parent, you know, just for more than three days. And I did three yes. months, so I'm, I'm kind of proud of my patience that I showed. <laughs> wow, that is definitely a lot of patience because I lived lived with my dad. I lived in Cyprus for a while and I moved, I moved back and I hated it, absolutely hated it. I really did. But... Um, so you're originally from the U UK um, on Instagram mm -hmm. and on Wikipedia, which I don't believe half the stuff on w w Wikipedia. You are from That's Lancashire. Sick. Whereabouts in Lancashire? Am, yes. You, 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 you from? I'm, a, I'm, I'm from a little village. It's called Hesketh Bank. Um, so I kind of just go with the nearest town, which is Southport or Preston. But in America, obviously, no one's heard of those places. So. I then say in between, um, it's, I'm from a little village in between Liverpool and Manchester, and people have kind of heard of those two places. Yeah, um, and I'm a, I'm originally from Nottingham, so for the Americans, I mention Robin Hood because yeah. that's the only only <laughs> only thing that they know, and they literally think that in our back garden it's London, and I think it's hilarious. I really, really do. So <laughs> from 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 a young lad living near Preston. You know, mm -hmm. looking back, did you ever think that you'd be in this position now? You know, married to a beautiful wife and a two and a half half year old little, little, little angel and have a career that you've got so far. That must be crazy looking back, you know, from when you was a kid. Uh, um, well, thank you, Brian. Yeah, when when you phrase it like that, yeah, um, it is definitely beyond my expectations of um, um, 
you know, going to acting classes in Manchester as a 13, 14 year old, um, you know, my aspirations, the dream when I was a kid was to get onto Coronation Street, you know, like that was, that's what I wanted uh, more than anything. Cause you know, in my yeah. village, people, people watch Coronation Street and, you know, I could walk around with my head held high and, um, and then, um, you know, I went to drama school at 23. So I was a little bit later. I'd already been working on some TV shows like Dream Team and I'd started doing a couple of plays. Um, but I just kind of didn't really know what I was doing. It was all instinct and, um, okay, if I'm in this situation, how would I be? Which is still kind of my, 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 my technique and my process today. But mm. I think just for my self-confidence, I wanted to spend the time, you know, learning. So I went to a, a drama school called Lambda, came out at 26. And, you know, I signed with, um, with a new agent when I came out and then suddenly the auditions went from always playing a, a, you know, middle, lower working class Northern boy to suddenly auditioning for these, like, you know, these, these big movies and these big franchises. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm just very fortunate and, and, and luck as well plays a massive part that I booked the jobs that I did, you know, but on the other flip side of what you just said, Brian, it's great to hear it, hear my, my career back like that because, the day to day is is not always like that. The day to day is a lot of disappointment, a lot of rejection, a lot of failure. You know, and never knowing where my next paycheck is coming from. I'm, I'm still not at a stage in my career where I get to pick and choose the projects I do. You know, I'm a working actor. Um, yeah. I really feel like, and also America now. You know, the the the, the industry is so big. There's so much competition that I think to, to book a job these days is a kind of a miracle in itself. So I'm I'm very fortunate and very blessed that. I booked the jobs I've booked, but you know, it doesn't get away from the fact that every day is still a grind and mm. you know, I don't know where my next job is coming from. And you said very loosely earlier on that you trained at Lambda, but Lambda is mm -hmm. an enormous school. I mean, people that have come out of Lam Lambda is Benedict Cum Cumberpatch, David Suchet, uh, Dominic Cooper, mm -hmm. John Lithgow, you know, so so how how did Lambda prepare you for what you're experiencing now and how different was it from how they prepared you if you know what i mean so did mm -hmm. it prepare you for all this you know the rejection but as well as the success um not really the success no i mean i think the difference between uh, lambda and rada is rada is about breeding stars and lambda is mm. about breeding actors i mean obviously i'm a bit biased because i went to lambda um yeah but um you know, we were reminded constantly, you know, like some of you aren't going to work, you know, in 10 years time, less than half of you are going to be doing this. And, and, and obviously at the time you're like, well, come on. I'm like, I'm, I'm at Lambda, I'm 23 and um, I'm living my dream. Like that's not going to be me, but um, you know, it very easily could have been. And some, some guys in my year who I think are phenomenal actors, uh, mm. you know, they, they're not doing it. These, they're not doing it now. So um you know, they, they try to keep a, a realistic expectation of, of what the industry is going to be like. And um, as I say, I'm just um, very fortunate that I, I still 10 years later after graduating, I'm, I'm still surviving off my art. <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly are. And I've actually got a friend that went to RADA and he said at RADA, it was very much they didn't give you the tools to become the actor that you was going to be. They literally told you how to be that actor and um mm. so no bi biased i'm sure lambda is a lot better um <laughs> <laughs> so um so so what actually brought you over to the states then what 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 you know what audition or what job actually got you over the pond mm. um honestly hand on heart it was my my girlfriend at the time who, who's now my wife um led we met at lambda and um she left Paris to, to move to London because she wanted to, well, I'm going to say, first of all, she wanted to be closer to me. Um, but then also, I think part of the reasons for moving to London was she wanted to work in English, in English language films. Um, and then she, she tried it for two years. And in those two years, she didn't work at all. And she just felt like America was a little bit more open at the time for her ethnicity. Um, mm. You know, for her age, she's um, in, a, in, a, in a mid thirties, shall we say. <laughs> right now um and um and she wanted to come here and she was coming off the back of girl with the dragon tattoo and she just done gi joe and and for me at the time it, it was good timing for me because i i had thor that i just filmed i'd just done downton abbey so um i had things and i, I, I you know as soon as i booked thor 
Um, American agents started showing interest in me. I signed with an American agent. We started going out together for a month or two months and doing the meetings and auditioning here. And then Elodie just wanted to give it a real go here. So, you know, I, I packed my bags and came with her. Um, it felt like an easy transition at the time. In reality, it wasn't. It was, it, it was a big culture shift for me that I didn't mentally prepare myself for. Um, you know, six months later, I'm lying in bed at two o'clock in the afternoon and LED's like, get out of bed. I'm like, what's their point? <laughs> like, you know, because it, 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 didn't, it didn't happen as quickly as, uh, as I wanted it to. Mm. And also, you know, I, I have, you know, a little bit of sadness that I, I gave up the chance to go and work in theatre a little bit more by leaving London. Um, mm. But, you know, like the plan is to, when all this pandemic calms down, is to split our time a little bit more between London and, and, and L.A., but there's always time to go into the theatre. Th theater. I suppose it's it's sort of a it's sort of a waiting game, isn't it? Because uh, you know people think the streets are paved with gold in LA. I mean, what was your first impression of LA? Because that must have been amazing. But did it live up to your dreams? No, is the <laughs> short answer. <laughs> no, you know, in London, you go to an audition and. Casting directors are very personal, uh, personable. Um, when you audition, you might have one guy in front of you, one guy after you. You can they offer you a cup of tea. You can have a little personal chat about your lives. And in LA, like I, I remember very specifically, I got off the plane, had to go straight to an audition, and I was waiting like an hour and a half to go in. There was guys lined up down the street waiting to go in and you go in and there's no pleasantries. You get one take and then you're out. And I was a bit like, like shell shocked. I was like, wow, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And <laughs> it took me a long time to kind of, um, you know, just to um, change the pace at which, you know, you have to deliver. Like you, you get one chance, you get one shot, one take at this scene. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, it took me a while just to, to figure that bit out. And um, I had Chad Rook that's in, uh, he's in the new Resident Evil mo mo movie that's coming out. Okay, and great. he was mentioning that um, a lot of castings, um, they're quite biased towards Americans um, getting parts and they'd rather them go to the Americans before the Canadians and the British. I mean, have you Ooh, witnessed this? Or is it something that you haven't wit wit witnessed at all? Um. Not really. No, um, not for me. I mean, for a start, if I don't get the job, I don't usually take the time to find out who got the job because I'm too bitter and jealous. <laughs> um, yeah, we're British. Like, that's my um... part. That's my part. You know, like, I can't watch this film now. Um, no, I mean, I, I think by going with an American, there's definitely, if you're coming out to America on a, on a working visa, like an O1, um, there's more paperwork involved. So obviously it's probably easier for two guys, similar talent, similar look, you know, one is less paperwork because you're American. Um, and then, but, you know, I, I think um, uh, non-American actors are very well respected here. You know, they, the casting directors, they really appreciate English actors, Australian actors, South African actors. Uh, Canadian actors, just basically anyone that's not American. <laughs> but, um, so it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to say if there's if there's any um, you know trend in that. I don't know. Yeah. So you've been in America for five years, as you say. Um, have you climatized the American way of life? Because you know I've been to America quite a few times, and I just I find it hilarious. Like World War Z, it's Z. Mm -hmm in america mm -hmm. trash cans yeah. sidewalks um mm -hmm. you know stuff like that have you climatized to the actual uh, culture? vacuum cleaners and vacuum yeah I, I mean slowly like my friends in in lancashire when i do go home or when i do talk to them <laughs> if i say you know if i say if i say vacuum instead of hoover if i say put it in the trash instead of put it in the bin like my friends will rip me to pieces and um <laughs> you know i am i like to think i'm still conscious of the words that i use um, but obviously, yeah. it's a lot easier in America to say, do you know where the trash is? Or do you know where the restroom yeah. is? As opposed to, do you know where the toilet is? Or do you know where the bin is? Um, you know, so. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it does take a while. It's a different way of life. You know, LA is, I mean, LA is different to the rest of America anyway. Um, mm. it's, it's the home of Hollywood and the celebrity and the stars and all that. So it is a different way of life. Um, you know, the only downside really of being in LA, from the biggest downside compared to being in like New York or London or Paris is, um everyone is doing something in the entertainment industry here 
you know everyone is doing something in the music industry everyone here is kind of chasing a dream of some kind of creative dream and um you know when you want to be seen as unique as an actor or like this is you know like it's when you walk into a coffee shop you see everyone everyone sat down you know they're working on a script you know someone's mm -hmm. writing a song whereas i kind of like the uh anonymity of uh, of living in in london where you know no one cares what you do for a living there yeah. um you know everyone's doing something and everyone's too busy to stop and be like oh well send me your resume like what films have you been in you know <laughs> it's like I don't, you know that's that's, that's the one thing I, I try and shy away from that side of it and do you miss the english comfort you know the English thing. I do, oh, I do, yeah. I do. You know, I was I was doing an acting class this morning just before I spoke to you on Zoom, and um, um, and I could see um parts there was some French people on it and a, a couple of English people, and they were I could see the windows, and I could just see like that 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 light as it was starting to go down. You know, that's that magic hour of sunset, mm -hmm. and I could see the fields in one guy's little windows, like England. Like I <laughs> want to get back to England. You know, I do miss England. I miss it terribly. And uh, I think, you know, I don't think we're going to be in L.A. forever, um, especially yeah. now. Like these days, no one's auditioning in the room for anything. So we don't really, we don't need to be here. I think, you know, just right now with everything opening up in California, it's a good time to it's, it's kind of a good time to be here. Like California is a beautiful state. You go two yeah. hours one way, you're in the mountains, you go half an hour one way, you're at the beach. Um, you know, there's lots to see with nature here. And that's the key to living in L.A. Get out of L.A. as often as you can. Yeah. I mean, when you when, when you uh, email me to say that you was in the mountains with with your family, I, I just thought, wow, wow. But saying that I'm only 10 minutes from the Peak District. So for me, oh, there you go. Yeah. It's literally just up Edale, Castleton, places like like, like that is beautiful really is oh the late so district let's... the late district you know the late district i proposed oh, to my yeah. wife in the late district you know i, I, I scattered my dad's ashes in the late district mm -hmm. you know like the late um is one of the most beautiful places in the world i you know yeah. I, it's, it's definitely you know england is a beautiful country so god bless america no god bless america <gasps> god save oh, the no. queen see it came out uh, you know you know why i say wow. god bless america because i was i was, had my interview for my green card and the guy was like, do you have anything, any last words, any statements you want to say? And I was like, uh, you know, I've, it's always been my dream to live in, in live in America. And um, I love the American way of life. And I was like, what else do I say? So I literally said, God bless America. <laughs> I was like, what am I saying? Oh, God. Wow. It's very hot here. Wow. Sorry, I just saw my sweat. No, so. it, it, is, it is fine. It's hot here as well. But again, only 14 degrees. Um, so let's talk about your most recent role. Because uh, recently I had your, your good friend Liam O'Donnell on the show. Um, ah, okay, okay, absolutely okay. amazing guy it was such a great mm. great chat chat with him because skylines for me i've been a fan since 2010 when skylines came out and i've just had eric balfour that was in skylines on the show as well um ah, okay. and I, you know the journey of them films are fantastic and skylines uh, came out recently on netflix and you play leon um mm -hmm. this kick-ass soldier uh, which I don't want to spoil it too much for people because I want people to go and watch it because it's on Netflix in the UK and Storm in Netflix at the moment. Uh, if you could tell me a bit about your role, who you play and what the film is about, if if you can remember, because it's a, a bit of time ago. So <laughs> No, no. Thanks, Brian, for that question. Um, <laughs> Leon. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> um, um, so I play a guy called Leon and he's kind of lost in the world when we find him um you know is so the world of skylines is we've had two other films that have come out basically i think when the movie starts uh, five years or 15 years before these aliens came in and uh, they tried to take over human try, try to take over humans and then at the end of the last film uh, these pilots um are kind of these humans this human conscious is kind of put inside these pilots so we're left in this world where this kind of dystopian futuristic post-apocalyptic world where you have these pilots these alien bodies but with these human consciousnesses inside them and um, so there's a lot of mistrust to foreigners and um, to people that are not from this planet to aliens from not from this planet and and because of this distrust uh, we need to we need to get rid of these pilots and i kind of fall into the wrong crowd which i think is the right crowd and the right way of going about doing things and during this film 
um, by finding the chosen one, this played by Lindsay Morgan. Uh, she plays Rose, who's kind of got half of this alien in her. Um, she can communicate with them. Uh, we come up with this plan to get her on this planet and to try and help save the day. Um, and, you know, so that's a really, really bad explanation of it. I do apologise, Brian. Um, that is but, really um, good. That is really good. Uh, Liam will be very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show him this bit. Um, and, you know, I play, I play this guy that comes into it and I've lost my sister. and My whole world has been changed because of these pilots. And um, and I kind of go with a group of mercenaries and uh, like a military, the military coup that's kind of running the the the, the, the country at the time. And... And I've been brought up by these guys and I've kind of been indoctrinated to believe what they believe. And, and it's only on this journey with the, with Rose, this chosen one, that I start to question my belief system. And, and, and you know, hopefully, hopefully I'll have a change of spirit by the end of the film. But we'll have to find out, won't we? <laughs> yeah. And um, apparently um, you, you got the call quite short notice for the actual role because someone else was oh, yeah. cast and mm -hmm. and you 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 came in at short short no, no notice the film is quite actually you know full of action i mean how did you prepare for the role of leon in such a short time because literally it must have been the phone call lithuania get kitted out and get on the set yeah, yeah it was uh it was very short notice my wife was just it was doing a, a disney film in toronto and because of my immigration problems, I was flying out a couple of days later. And so my wife thought I was flying to Toronto to take care of our daughter for three months while <laughs> she does this film. And then I got this call and it was like, hey, in two days, you need to fly to Lithuania. And so, you know, at this, and, and I'd seen by this time, I'd, in those two days, I watched the movies. I really liked the conversation I had with Liam. And then I read the script and I was like, I can do something with this guy, you know? I can play this guy and um and you know i'm an actor and i need to work and it's what i love to do so um fast forward uh, a quick flight to toronto say goodbye to my wife and my daughter um my uh, sister-in-law who did that nice piece of artwork that i took down so no one can see it because I'm, I'm nice like that to my family <laughs> um I, I then fly to lithuania and, and yeah like we had uh, like 10 days before we started shooting so obviously like Luckily, I keep myself kind of fit. Um, I did have a little bit of a beer belly when I went into it. The producer kind of, Matthew uh, Schaus, kind of pulled me aside and says, are you okay getting a bit bigger? I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. But like, I've got 10 days to get bigger. Like, what do you expect me to do? <laughs> um, I'm very, I'm fortunate that I have a background in martial arts. I've done uh, Muay Thai like for like, over 15 years. I've done a couple of years of jujitsu. Going to Lambda, like, uh, you know, stage combat is a big, big part of the course and the training there. I was always good at that. So um, it just meant that I could pick up the choreography very, very quickly. And sometimes we would choreograph it and then shoot it because there just wasn't the time. And also, you know, this is not a big, big budget movie. This is not a $150 million Marvel movie. This is a, mm -hmm. you know, $10 million, if that, sci-fi movie, independent sci-fi movie. So, but I'm okay with that. I've done independent films before. I love doing indie movies. There's a freedom to it. And, you know, sometimes we would literally choreograph it and then it'd be like, okay, let's shoot that. Um, and then obviously with the acting side of it, ask as many questions as I can before it. But then, you know, you just have to say, okay, whatever happens, happens now. And I can't control this. And I'm just going to support Lindsay that's doing her thing as Rose. that did an amazing job. And like, you know, just accept like, I'm a, I'm a team player in this. This movie's not about me. So how can I support my castmates? How can I support Liam? Um, mm. well I could do that by enjoying myself you know and it clearly shows I mean the film is fantastic and when you say it's a low bud budget like, like Liam also said you know it wasn't a massive budget but it kicks the behind of any sci-fi sci film out there um, why do you think it's been so pop popular because it's been received quite quite well to be fair I think so yeah I think so and thank you very much um, when I first saw it I was blown away by the uh, by the production value of it, you know, and um, I was really proud and, and, and very impressed with it. Why has it done so well? I don't know. I think, you know, the the, the um, Beyond Skyline did pretty good with Frank Grillo in it. And mm -hmm. um, so it already had a fan base. And then I think the way Liam just expanded this universe and just, you know, from the first film that you saw in 2010, how that's developed and evolved to now we're going to this other planet, Cobalt One, and we're going to go and see where these these pilots, where these aliens are from. 
think it's a credit to his storytelling and, and, and the universe that he created. Why is he doing so well right now? I don't know, maybe because everyone's in the lockdown and people want to have um, an escapism. People want to go on a little journey and, and have an adventure and laugh, and not take itself too, too seriously. You know, we're not trying to make mm. Sigourney Weaver's aliens. Um, we're trying to, you know, find our own little tone of this film. And there isn't that many films that, um, you know, that not laugh at themselves, but um, have fun in the making of it. And we all did that. I think me personally, I was just happy to get away with my wife and daughter for three months. It was like, hallelujah, give me a break, you know? <laughs> so I was happy to go on set every day. <laughs> I am sure you missed them. I, I am, I'm sure I you did. I did, you, I, you did. Know, you did. I did terribly. Um, I did. So are we going to see Leon again? Because obviously, not to ruin it for anyone, but, um, well, they should have seen it by now, to be fair. Um, but it's left, um, you know, obviously wanting more. So do you think we're going to see Leon again? Um, is there any plans do you know of that could uh, find Leon, on, Leon and Rose maybe hooking up? Because, come on, the chemi chemi chemistry is there. Not spoiling yes. it for, any, for, any, for anyone, but... Yeah, from, you know, from, from to support it. to support Leon, you know, I'm sure Leon would love another crack at Rose, um, <laughs> and um, and I do think we had a really good chemistry, Lindsay and I. I'd love to work with her again, uh, collaborating with Liam, and it was such a fun experience. He's so um, open to suggestions, letting me try things out. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. So um, um, I, th I think I'll, I think if they write a part for me, I will do it. And, and I know that Liam is working on it now. And uh, and yeah, you know, if he does another one, I, I will be in it for sure. Awesome, awesome. And I've got to say, it's quite nice and refreshing to hear, uh, you know, good things said about a director because everything in the press right now is all bad about directors. So it's quite nice to hear that that you know Liam's thought off in fond ways. Uh, and he's not, no. you know, yeah. the, sle or, or the sleazy, the sleazy directors. Yeah, the bad news is the bad stuff is coming about about the sleazy directors. Liam is not yes. sleazy. No, <clears> no <throat> he doesn't come come across like that at all. So we've seen you in in obviously uh, Skylines, but Thor: uh, The Dark World. How amazing was that to get? Because Thor did so well at the box office. And then to get cast in that. I mean, what did your mates think yeah. of that at back home? Because that must have been spectacular. Well, to give you an idea of the, the friends I hang around with back home, some of them to this day have still not seen that movie. <laughs> That's how much my friends love me. Wow. <laughs> wow. No, but... Um, like when I got that film, yeah, like I was I was less than twelve months out out of drama school. Um, I booked World War Z, very very small, very small supporting role in that, um, and then and then I got I got Thor, and you know Kevin Feige offering me a three movie deal, it just blew my mind. I could not believe it. I'd never in a million years thought I'd be working on a on a franchise like that, and you know it was a it was a great experience. I was very young, you know, I, was, I think I was twenty six, twenty seven. 27 when I was shooting that, so like nearly 10 years ago now. Um, but yeah, I loved I loved working on that, and uh, you know I'm hoping that they invite me back in some capacity because everyone everyone else seems to get invited back onto it. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've got to say how amazing that film is. Literally, if anyone mentions Thor: The Dark World, there's one little bit that that always sticks in my mind, and it's you, and it's the car keys. Do you know when <laughs> you know when you throw throw the car keys and, and yeah, they disappear? Yeah. Yes. And uh, Darcy goes, "Were they the car keys?" And you're like, "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> and for me, for me, for some reason, that just stands stands out. It it, it is hilarious. Um, and Thank then you. obviously, um, you know, you know, mentioning other projects that that you've done. Literally, you've you've done absolutely tons, which are amazing stuff. Like the last ship, which, to be honest. The time we're living in now is quite mm -hmm. poign po poignant. But uh, I've got to say The Capture, what a wonderful film, you know, exploring the af wow, af afterlife you. and your accent in that. And I want to talk about accents because, mm -hmm. you know, for an English person going to the States, it must be so difficult to, um, you know, do different accents. And I mean, how easy is it for you to do the American accent? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy, you know. It's constant work. I mean, I've mm -hmm. I've made my voice coach a lot of money over the years with all the, you know, 
all the time they put in with me. And I remember when I first moved out here, I mean, I remember the first time I started auditioning for American parts and my agent mm. at the time was very truthful and said, you might need to work on your American, you know, cause it was not in a very good place. Um, and then when you come out here, you're constantly being told by some, it's like, you've got to walk into the room with the accent, you know, you cannot break the accent. Then you've got other people saying, no, they want to know who you are. Like go in, they love British, British actors go in. It's fine. They know you can do it. And, Constantly, it took me a couple of years just to deal with like, okay, am I going to go in with my Northern English accent and let them see me for who I am? Or do I try and cover it with this? And I just always mix and, mix and match. Like sometimes I go in and it's always nice at the end when you break the accent and you say, oh, I'm, I'm from England or you just speak, all right, cheers guys, see you later. And they're like, what, what, hang on, are you, are you, are you British? And that's always <laughs> nice. But but then, you know, it is, con it is constant work and, um, um you know, working on any accent is, is work for me. It's a lot easier to talk in my own voice to you right now, Brian. Yeah. It must have really thrown them off, off, you know, uh, you know, off, off their stools with that Northern like accent. Cause it, it works, works for Sean Bean, doesn't it really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. would you, you know, is, is, is there an accent that you wouldn't want to do? uh no not at all i love any accent um you know I, I know that i've never really worked on like australian or south like my south african is awful you know uh i got I, you know i did a series in south africa and i was like in three months i still could not do it even a little bit um but um yeah you've worked on your stutter though I did, you, you, obviously you don't have oh, it nowadays right or you do or... literally well i do so i start this show to challenge myself because when I get nervous or tired, my stutter comes out. And literally, when I was younger, I was so bad. I had, you know, my friend's mums hitting me on the back of the head to try and get the word out. But, <laughs> but um, that soon got a bit annoying. Um, but no, I went, I went through uh, speech therapy for about about seven, eight years for okay. for it. Um, but I, you know what, I've done all right. You know, I, you know, I've been in the West you sound End. Sound great. Um, you know, I've 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 done film and TV my, my, myself. Uh, oh, yes. Nothing okay, massive, okay. obviously not Thor and stuff stuff like that. But I've done like peak peak practice. Uh, yes, you in peak I've practice. On, my mum, my mum loves that show. I've been so, on that a couple of times. Maybe my mum uh, can interview interview you, Brian. Maybe we can set yeah, that up. No, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so so going on to your one wonderful background. Um, have you kept anything? from any of your films or shows? Have you borrowed anything? Uh, oh, yeah, so much. As they say. So much. So much. All right. <laughs> let, let me just turn my AC on for yeah. one sec. And I, I'm going to bring you... I, I'll bring you something that um, I got given on Thor that I didn't steal. Okay, one sec. You like okay, this. Okay, okay. So, I don't know if you can see this, Brian. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. You can't really see it with the light. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is my one-of-a-kind poster that the artist that did the artwork for, for Thor, The Dark World, he made me that. And you probably couldn't see it, but there's, and there's a little image that on the poster was Thor, but they changed it to my character holding up the uh, the car. You know, when we have this moment where the worlds are colliding and the astrophysicists mean that like the, yeah. the gravity doesn't exist. So that was a gift. That was very nice. Oh, wow. But I'm actually kind of bad at taking stuff. Um, I remember on what? Thor. Yeah, I mean, I, I, take, I, t I do take a lot of my costumes. I asked the costume lady and by the end of it, at the beginning, they always say, no, we have to keep it. But by the end, you know, I use my, what little English charm I have. And they always give it to me. So I've given my brother his Christmas present. I gave him my jacket that I wore on Thor. Um, I got my awesome. Timberland boots from Thor. My snowboard gear that I have. The trousers I got off uh, on Godzilla. And um, and the jacket I got off a short I did with Jessica Hemwick. So I'm kind of... That is awesome. Yeah, I take a lot. I mean, th and, and they don't realise <clears throat> how valuable those pieces are. Because my sponsors of the show, Prop Store, sell and mm -hmm. buy you screen use props and cost costume from the movies and to give you an inkling uh harrison ford's jacket from 
Star Wars sold for like wow. half a million dollars. Wow. You know, yeah. and and the market is just unbelievable. But you've got mm-hmm. to keep a few things. It's always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Um, yes. And, yes. Although you know, I do we, remember one very quickly. I did um, before I went to drama school. I did a show called Doctors. I did an, an episode of Doctors, and they gave me these really nice trousers. Um, and at the time, you know, I think I was eighteen or nineteen. I was like, oh, I can wear these out in Preston on a Friday night. No one's going to notice this. So I just took them. The first time, first and only time I've ever taken something without asking. Because I got about 25 minutes in my, on the motorway on the M25 going yeah. home. And I got a call off the, off the uh, assistant director like, hi, Jonathan. Um, yeah, costume is just looking for those um, black Calvin Klein trousers. Do you know where they are? I'm like, uh. And I've got them like next to me. I was like, no, 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 I don't know. I mean, I just put them <gasps> on the chair. I felt so bad. So doctors, I'm really sorry. I do owe you one <laughs> pair of, of, of trousers. Just out of curiosity, can you remember your director? Because I remember I worked with a director called Ray Kilby. There was a a director on Doctors at the time because he did a film called Token King that I was in with Samantha Morton years ago. And, um, yeah, she had to slap slap me in the movie. It was great. Um, So that's my claim to (laughs) fame. Yeah, you got slapped (laughs) by Samantha Morton. That's great, yeah. I'll take that. So what's the the worst thing and the best thing about being you? Oh, my God. Um... The, I mean, the, it's easy to list the worst thing. I mean, I, I could be here all day. Um, uh, I'm anxious. Um, I am a bit OCD. Um, I'm a perfectionist. Um, my wife describes me as a mosquito. I like to I like to wind <laughs> people up. I kind of like get some sick enjoyment out of doing it. A um, little bit hyper. Um, yeah, they're the negatives. Um, the best thing is my two-year-old daughter. Um, I have the most beautiful little angel and um, she is hyper like me and uh, and she's got a very good sense of humor and I made that, you know, like she's she's mine, she comes from me, so that's the best thing about me. Has she turned into a diva yet? Because I've got a three-year-old li- little girl and a seven-year-old little girl and my three-year-old <sighs> is a two? proper diva. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no more though, no no more. I've, I, yeah. I have been sent to the vets and no more from me. Um, but but your your two two and a half half year old isn't it magical to watch them grow and their expressions and what they get from you? You know, mm-hmm. I I, I think that's magical. It is, but I'm just too tired. I'm just too exhausted. Everyone says like, isn't it a beautiful age? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't slept for three days. I have no idea what I'm seeing. Um, no, exactly. of course it is. You know, she definitely she has mine and my wife's stubbornness. So it's like. And I just don't know how, how do you do it when like your daughter doesn't want to clean her teeth? I just give in every time. I'm like, Mina, you've got to clean your teeth. No. Mina, clean your teeth. No. No, no, no. I'm like, okay, let's not tell mama. Let's we'll clean your teeth tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I'm so weak. I'm so weak when it comes oh. to my daughter. It is. It is. Well, the thing is, it's a bloke, bloke thing, isn't it? I mean, my, my three-year-old will put her hands together and go, please, like that. And your, your heart <laughs> melts, literally, your heart melts. So... So um, I've got to start saving up for horses and 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 two oh, weddings. Wow. Um, but uh, what's next next for you, Jonathan? What is next for you that we could see you in that you're working on, or is it a case of, you know what, you're taking a breath, you're taking a a back seat and enjoying life? Um, no, I have um, I have a film that I'm very proud of that's going to be coming out. I don't think it's it's not out in the UK yet. It's doing. It's doing the rounds at a few festivals at the moment. It's called The Five Rules of Success. And it is a very cool little movie. Um, it's directed by Orson Oblovich, who um, it's the second time I've collaborated with him. The other film I did with him was called Trespassers, um, also known as Hell is Where the Home Is. And um, <clears throat> we got on so well on that that he wrote this film and he wrote a part for me. And it was, I mean, if you thought, if you think that Skylines is a small budget, this is a micro budget. But what he did with it is really, is really special. It's, I mean, it's a dark, it's a very dark uh, art house film. That's kind of a commentary on, on the American justice system and what happens when you get eaten up by this justice system and, and, you know, the opportunities and the chances to, to reform when you come out are very slim. And I play a uh, son of I play American again. I play the son of an Armenian, um, son of an Armenian restaurant owner. But my dad owns a 
a Greek restaurant, even though he's Armenian. So that's just okay. the type of kind of <laughs> film. But I'm very proud of that. It's one of the few films that my wife watched and actually said, you're all right in this one. So um, uh, I'm really happy for that to come out and hopefully it'll get some attention and, and get out in the world, you know, because it's independent, you know, independent distributed film. Mm. And Apart from that, nothing. Taking care of my daughter. <laughs> Just relaxing. You've got the scenery in the mountains. Are you quite competitive with your wife? Um, I'm not, actually, no. no. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking career and, and that side of things, no, not at all. You know, um, we're a team and I help her and she helps me. And, you know, if, I, if I'm getting jealous of my um, mixed race French wife, uh, then I've got a big problem that I need to deal with, you know, because <laughs> yeah. I can get, maybe get jealous of like, you know, guy similar age, similar look as me. Um, yeah, but um, no, not with my wife. I mean, we're both stubborn, but I wouldn't say we're, we're not that competitive. Well, maybe when we play like table tennis or, yeah, probably that. <laughs> okay, Jonathan, thank you so much for a great interview. It's been a blast speaking to you and... You know what? I look forward to seeing seeing that movie when it come, comes over to the UK. Um, I've got your Instagram at the bottom of the screen for everyone to follow you, Mr. Jonathan yes. Howard. Uh, are you on yes. Twitter at all? Because I, I couldn't find you on Twitter. Not really. I mean, like, I'm so bad at social media. Like, I remember when Thor came out, like, I think Instagram was just happening. And I remember Natalie Portman saying, oh, I don't do that. And I was like, yeah, me neither, Natalie. I'm not into that either. <laughs> uh, but it's just like, it's just laziness. And so I'm a little bit behind the game. I did have a Twitter account, but I got a two and a half year old. I do well to clean my teeth. Never mind, like, post pictures and, and comment on what's going on in the world. There's enough people doing that. But uh, please give me a follow. <laughs> give me a follow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome Jonathan you look after yourself keep safe all the best for your family and uh, I look forward to everything you do in the future it's been an absolute pleasure yeah you too Brian good luck to you man thanks for thanks for taking the time to talk to me today good luck pleasure. with the uh, yeah good luck with the two kids <laughs> right I'm just going to uh, stop this a second um uh...